Welcome to the Wedco Podcast, where wedding wisdom meets street smarts. We're dishing out all the tips, tricks, and wedding goss to take your wedding to the next level. Time to ditch the formalities and get this party started. Yeah! <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Wedco Podcast. I'm Togga and today we are at Hazel and we have Fee on the podcast with us from Couture Wedding Events. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. I'm it's, so excited to be here. I'm super excited to have you because I know like when we're reaching out for, you know, people to come on to Sydney um, earlier on and you like just getting your messages through and <laughs> hearing your personality, I was like, oh. we have to have you on. Oh, thanks. Honey. So thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Yes. Um, maybe we can start with a little bit of your, your story, your background, I guess. Yeah, sure. Um, I am actually... She's Zimbabwean. Uh, I was born there, grew up there, and then uh, came here in 2000 to do hotel management school at the Blue Mountains International Hotel Management School up in Lura. Um, and that was really fun. I then decided to um, do my master's in accounting <laughs> <laughs> very randomly. And while I was there, I actually, um, I, I, I started to work for a bridal boutique uh, in the Dimmix building okay. uh, in the city and um, I just fell in love with it. Um, I went into accounting for about a year. <laughs> it was not for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and so I decided one day I'm going to quit my job yep. <laughs> and I'm going to start my own wedding planning business. So, so this was 15 years ago now. So, yeah. so yeah. you hadn't even started the business, hadn't, hadn't, had you got clients already or you're no. just like, no, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing. Yeah. That's this amazing. Is, yeah. So I, I'd worked in the, in the bridal industry uh, for about three years at that stage. And I kind of really loved helping brides. Um, I had an event background already. So I'd worked in, um, you know, hotels and, um, and so I, it just all kind of fused together. My accounting background came yeah. in with all the budgeting. Yeah. Yeah. So it was just kind of a very natural thing. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, 2009 probably wasn't the best year to start a business. It was the GFC. <laughs> yep. So, but I learned that people still get married. Yeah, so, exactly. So, you know, whatever economical weird things happening in the world. Yep. Yeah. So and, was, and what, what does the business look like at the moment in its current phase? Look, we are we are very boutique. Hun. I do about ten weddings a year, yep. and that's uh, you know many years ago before I had my children. Uh, you know, I used to do about twenty five years uh, weddings a year. Yeah, but now I just want to be with some like with some fabulous clients um, and really give them a very detailed service. So yep. yeah, okay. so it's really fun. Yeah, is that like ten? full service wedding plan yes. yeah so yes. can you outline for me what what does that involve like if someone's booking you for the a full wedding planning service yes so well ultimately a lot of those couples come to us they haven't even got a venue they don't have a date yeah. um they don't have an idea of a venue a lot of the time and so we take them th from the, all the way from the start yeah uh, find their venue find their ceremony uh location find you know then we go into photographers and videographers. Um, we also create uh, like an initial budget for them when, yep. when they first come to us just to kind of show them yep. what things cost because yeah. a lot of people are very unaware of what things cost. Um, and then uh, we are obviously very heavily involved in the styling of their wedding as well. So we are, you know, connecting with different florists and different uh, new furniture hire yep. places. Um, and we're creating these like very comprehensive style guides for them kind of based on what, uh, uh, what we feel like would really suit their day yeah. from what they're telling us. Um, yeah. And then obviously we look after their actual wedding day for them, make sure there is like no issues on the day. <laughs> <laughs> and if, you know, things do pop up, which they do, uh, we're there to kind of find solutions to those challenges. Uh, but yeah, I think it's a really fun process. It's very, you get to know the couples really well, yeah. um, which I think is so lovely. You know, some of my COVID couples were with us for three years. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, because they waited until 2023 to get married, a lot of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's really lovely that you get to know them. And then obviously what's wonderful is you get to know, um, you know, they have their babies together and, you know, and their second babies and you're 
creating these birthday parties for their oh, babies amazing. now. So it's just a wonderful kind of progression. Yeah. All you're doing there, their sister's weddings now. So you kind of know the families really well. Yeah. They trust you. Mm -hmm. uh, they know that you do great things um, and you know, they know that you've reduced the stress from, from their daughters or grooms. Um, but yeah, so this is why I really got into it. And it's one of the reasons why I don't really do a lot of corporate events. Uh -huh. uh, I love a good like activation or something, but yeah, weddings is where it is uh, for me. The, the personalities, you know, finding that amazing thing that they wanted for their day. Yep. Um, and also, you know, taking them along for the ride and making sure, you know, if they don't want to do the first dance, then they don't have to do the that's first okay. dance. Yeah. <laughs> we can find something else for them to do that's more them. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And like I said, how long would, so you're essentially planning the whole wedding. Um, what's a usual timeline from, you know, a, a client essentially hmm. kind of books you in until their wedding date? Yeah. I mean, most couples are booking us between uh, six to six six months to a year. Yep. Um, but again, we are planning already 2026 weddings. Mm -hmm. um, we have a few international couples who want to take their time. Yeah. So yes. Uh, but again, we've also done as short as eight weeks, hun, um, yep. or three months. Yeah. Um, we did, I remember, uh, back in 2019, we did two back to back eight week weddings. Um, so that, that's a real fun, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, but it's extraordinary because again, we take on a lot of that, um, stress and streamline that for them yep. where if they were on their own, yes. <laughs> <laughs> they would be a bit overwhelmed. A bit of so, a different story. Yes, Absolutely. <laughs> And I guess like having like 10, you know, clients a year as well, like you can put so much focus onto yes. those. Like, you know, a lot of people are kind of focused on the quantity, but then, yeah, yes. you know, you've got quality, you've got 10, like we are focused on you and yes. we've got everything into you. Yes. So, and, and again, I didn't want like um, a gazillion assistants. I'm yeah. the one. Yeah. Uh, it's why I got into it. I'm the one that wants to plan your wedding. Mm -hmm. So that's why I decided um, – you know, a few years ago, I was like, why, why am I doing 25? Where I could just do 10 and really focus in yeah. and create these extraordinary high-end, amazing weddings. Yeah. I was talking about it previously, but it gets into the point where you started what you did because you loved it. And then all of a sudden mm -hmm. you're just managing staff and you're almost working to pay staff, yes. you know? And it's like, I feel like a lot of people kind of say thing, they'll grow their business and it's like, yes, more, 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 more. And then it's like, oh, no, we need to kind of cut back and really refine what we're doing yes. and get back to the point of like why I actually began this. Yes. Um, yeah, because there's a lot of planners that, you know, they're, they're not doing, you know, mm. much client-facing stuff anymore. They've kind of got the people underneath them and, you yes. know. So, um, yeah, it's cool to kind of – did did you go kind of bigger like that and then refine no, back I've down? No, I've always been quite small, hun. Um, but I just decided, particularly during COVID – that you, your priorities change and yep. you just want to do these amazing things with these amazing couples and get to know them really well and have those relationships with them. Yep. And and I don't think you can really do that uh, when you go super big, mm -hmm. you know. So, yeah, so this is what makes me happy. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> That's good, good yeah. to have a job that makes you happy. Yeah. I love that. I, I, I'm very, very lucky, I think, um, that I found my thing. Yeah. Because I mean, I still meet people now who are not quite sure if that's what they want to do in their lives. So, yeah. Yeah. And like if the wedding game can be hard like that because if you have a good business, there can be money in it too. But then yes. there's a lot of people that kind of just fell into it and now we're making good money mm. and there's nothing else I could do to match that as well. Yeah. So there's like a lot of people kind of stay in it for that reason. Yes. And you can definitely see the difference between those two people. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and weddings you've got to be passionate about because yeah. it will – It'll really tear you apart if it's not something you're into. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. There's so many people that are going above and beyond for their clients that if if that was just a corporate gig, you would never do that. But exactly. because they love their clients, they're like willing to do all the extras for oh, that yeah. reason. Yeah. You you want to make sure. I mean, a few years ago, I I broke my leg at a at a wedding at the ceremony. Uh, we were at the mint in the city, um, and by the time I got to reception, I just thought, oh, maybe I've done something silly. Uh, by the time I got to reception, I couldn't actually walk anymore. Oh, uh, right. So my assistant ran around, kind of just sat at the staff table and <laughs> just told her what to do. 
Um, and because my mission was to make sure that that couple didn't know mm-hmm. because I wanted it to be about them. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I made it to the bridal table and then I realized I actually cannot walk anymore. So yeah. So, but it's only at the end of the night that they realized that something had gone wrong. Um, and oh, that's, yeah. that was my mission to make sure. And then I went to emergency. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, though that couple is amazing. Um, they now have children. Like it's just extraordinary to see that, that amazing, uh, you know, they're, they're our friends now, which is so good. Yeah. And it, it, it's a different thing, isn't it? Like I, my daughter's nine and she'll sometimes ask me, like, can't you just not go to the wedding? You're like, no, like <laughs> that's not a thing, you know, no. like we can't just call in sick. Exactly. Maybe on other industries, <laughs> sure, but yeah. uh, no. <laughs> yeah, it's like, no, we've got to be there. Sweet. <laughs> is, is there certain venues that you work at regularly within, is it mainly Sydney where a lot of your weddings are? Mainly Sydney, yes. Yep. Um, but again, we also do international. We've done the UK, Malaysia, Bali, places that I understand. Yeah. Uh, you know, I did have a bride call me who wanted me to plan a wedding in Israel and I was like, oh, that's so lovely, but I don't know anything about Israel. Yeah. I think you should find a planner there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's mostly Sydney. I really love like a wedding at Key. Benelong is a big one for us. Uh, we do wear a lot of weddings uh, with Grand Pacific Group. So they own QVB, Sergeant Smith's, um, a Dunbar House. Uh, yeah, so those are kind of, we get a lot of North Shore couples uh, because we're based in the North Shore. But again, um, yeah, so those are kind of the ones that I really enjoy. Uh, Pier One's a big one as well that we do. So yeah, so those are kind of the ones. But again, it's always nice to meet a couple who's maybe getting married at a new place and you're kind of exploring how to how to work with that team as well. So yeah. well, you could say you're, you know, you're pretty much the top end of wedding planners. So was that a conscious decision of like, this is a target market that I want to go for? I mean, I think, again, it's just a natural progression, hun. Uh, I, uh, because again, I only do kind of the 10 a year. Um, I felt like the high end is where I wanted to be. Plus I have the experience, you know, I haven't been just doing this for two or three years. Like some of the planners, um, I've been doing it for 15. I know a lot of the venues. Uh, I know a lot of the vendors in Sydney really well. A lot of them are very close friends now. So I think I think I'm bringing that expertise to the table. Yeah. And you know, I love a I love a bit of bling, yeah. a little bit of high end. <laughs> you know. Uh, so yeah. So I think it's just a kind of a natural progression and something I really enjoy. And I feel like it is working with your people. You know, yeah. like there's there's um you know I'm or like you know this boho guy down in Byron probably isn't going to fit in, even if he's the best photographer or anything like that. If it's not your people, it's very hard to kind of resonate as well. Yeah, but again, every couple is completely different. Yep. So uh, we get a complete range of what people want to spend, um, their personalities, what they're into. So each wedding is completely different and sometimes each uh, group of vendors is mm-hmm. completely different because I like to match the vendors to the, to the couple. Yep. Um, I don't. Uh, again, sometimes I tend to work with the same people yep. just because that couple realizes that they're also fantastic. Exactly. So, yep. But I like to give them a great choice. Uh, we would probably look at maybe three florists, um, multiple photographers, multiple yep. videographers, so that they feel that they're having the choice um, exactly. rather than me just presenting one of them and saying, here you go, yep. we're, meet, we're working with these people yep. um, because or, everybody's different. Or vice versa being on Instagram and here's 700. <laughs> like, good, luck, good luck getting those down. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's huge. It's huge now. Um, I mean, just typing in wedding photographer must be very overwhelming <laughs> exactly. in Google. So Yeah, your algorithm is done. As soon yes. as you put that in there for the next three years, your, yes. your life's over. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Um, so you deal a lot with kind of, um, both local and international clients. Yes. Is there a difference between how you go about, you know, working with those clients? Not really. I mean, sometimes with the international clients, we physically have to go and do things for them Mm -hmm. that they wouldn't be able to do while they're here. So, you know, we are going to the venue, we are zooming them from the venue or we're taking videos and sending them through, so, yeah, so it's a slightly different way, but it's pretty much the same process. It's yep. just uh, sometimes you just have to be a, a little bit more detailed with the international clients. Yep. Um, and it's a lot more video, a lot of more photos um, that you're producing with them, yep. a lot more email. Um, and, again, thankfully for Zoom calls, everything is 
so much easier now. Yeah. So. And I feel like, yeah, so many people are happy to just be like a Zoom call now as well yes. because it just works for everyone. Cool, I've got half an hour. I can be here and have that chat now yes. rather than, I guess, coming down to a studio or an office or something like that mm. as well. And and I think also the local clients are also preferring Zoom calls because yep. that means that they can kind of get on with their day, yep. you know, in their lunch break, let's do a Zoom call with that photographer. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, so I think they also really appreciate that. Okay. So that's how it works. So you would have, um, you have a client and then you're like, cool, I've written, you know, these, mm. here's five photographers. Mm. And then you would almost jump on a phone call with that photographer at the same time and have like a three way Zoom. Exactly. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. really cool. And and we would probably do it with the other four as well. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Or, or we probably maybe look at, uh, you know, five different photographers' um, portfolios, yep. then they might um, put it down to three mm-hmm. and then we'll Zoom with those three or meet them in person and look at their uh, albums and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, and then they go to choose from the from that three or if they're still not happy, we look at more. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Like where, you know, Gold Coast Byron, I don't feel like that is really a thing. Like yes. I feel like Melbourne, Sydney, probably leading the way within this and it feels, if, to me, it feels very kind of, if you went to America, that's what I would expect kind of thing. Yes. But it, it is a completely different world to the world of weddings that I'm in. Yes. And it's very easy to get ingrained with your world. Oh, totally. Um, and then you kind of look outside, you're like, there's there's so many different wedding markets within the wedding niche. Yes. As well. So, um, yeah, it's just, it, that's, it just feels so, yeah, um, I guess foreign, but it's really cool. It's, do you just have like so many vendors sucking up to you like crazy to try, <laughs> try and work with you? We, we get emails every every week kind of yeah. fabulous people who want to show us their incredible new venue or, you know, their incredible cake makers. So yeah. it's always so nice to meet people because in the back of your mind, you're like, well, as soon as I get that couple, yes. that person would be awesome for that couple. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's always amazing to meet new people, you know, um, and then you see them on Instagram and then you follow them. And then you're like, you know, a year later, you're working with them because you're like, I think my couple thinks that you're going to be amazing. So yeah, yeah. that's perfect. Would you have any hints or tips that are for, say, coming from a vendor perspective um, and they want to work with you? Yes. What are some things they should do to be, you know, apart from being really good at their job, yes. <laughs> um, to be able to work with you? Yes. So I normally get them to send me their portfolios or their price list just so that I have that on file. Yep. So that when I'm like, Ooh, let's do that. Um, otherwise, oh, I love to get together with people, meet people, see their, you know, see their portfolios or see their venues. Um, yeah, so it's always nice to kind of meet people face to face, you know, yeah. or have a chat over the phone or a little Zoom call. Yeah. yeah, and and then I and then I have that kind of in my brain when I'm going to kind of create these amazing weddings. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I did have a few questions from guests. Oh, I mean, wow. guests, listeners. Oh, goodness. Um, so okay. I can, I can, oh, okay. This is a good one. Yes. So um, they want to know how a wedding plan is paid. Like, is it, yes. is it a full fee or is it a percentage of the cost of a wedding? If you're happy to talk about this. Absolutely. I'm not too sure. Okay, cool. Very happy. Yeah. Because it is, everybody's very different in the okay. way that they charge. Yeah. Um, but how I like to charge is that we have three packages. Okay. Oh, technically four, but. The four, three main ones are, um, is the full planning package. So that is actually a percent of your, of your budget. Yes. With a minimum spend of 20,000. Yep. So ultimately anybody who's spending less than 200,000 is uh, under the minimum. But Mm -hmm. once we go over the 200,000 and we're doing that three or four or maybe half a million, we're then going to a percentage because Again, those weddings are much more involved. Yes. Um, And so I've learned that my time is super valuable. (laughs) And so that I need to be able to capture the really big ones, but also not scare off the the smaller couples, you know, who are paying for them themselves potentially, um, but still would like the professional help. Uh, We then also have like a styling package, which is really cool, hun. uh, which is more for couples who have kind of not uh, planned a few things, maybe got a venue, got a little bit overwhelmed yeah. <laughs> um, and, and they've come to us and 
that uh, is more of a fixed fee. Yep. Um, and that includes 15 meetings where our full planning package is unlimited meetings. Okay. So, yeah, so it's kind of a nice breakdown for each couple, uh, each type of couple yep. that normally come to see me. And then we have a wedding day coordination package, which is much more simpler. It's great for couples who want to plan their own, yep. but maybe they've got some like kind of logistical things on their day that they need professional help with. Okay. And that's a much smaller one. It's only three meetings before, before yep. the day. Um, yeah. So those are kind of the three main packages. And then we've kind of created a new one um, more for couples who want to plan their own, um, but need some professional advice. So we've just created the mini couture consult, <laughs> <laughs> which has been really great, uh, yeah. very helpful for couples who are kind of, you know, they're already organized mm -hmm. um, and they just kind of want to pop on a Zoom call with me for 90 minutes. Yep. And then I'm uh, providing them with like a, a budget, um, maybe a timeline for them as well. Uh, create a style guide, uh, like a smaller style guide for them. Yeah, okay. And and that kind of sets their planning up. Yeah. And they can uh, keep adding to those documents. Um, yeah. So that's been very, very helpful for a lot of couples. I feel like that almost gets to the point where they, they either have that initial consult and they're yes. like, perfect, thank you. Or they're like, oh, we need your help. Oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So that is ultimately what what you hope also happens is yep. maybe a little bit more down the track. They're yep. like, okay, maybe we'll get it for wedding day coordination yeah. as well. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, but, but again, uh, couples are very organized these days. There's a lot of information out there on Instagram. So you can very easily plan your own wedding, but it's just, if you want what I'll help, we're here. So, yeah. yeah. What does a team look like on, okay, say maybe on the day we'll start there. Yes. What does a team look like on a day for like a, a bigger wedding that you're doing? Yes. What would well, that I team mean, it's ultimately just me and my assistant, hun, but we are managing all the other suppliers. So they ultimately become our team. Yeah. We're all working together yep. uh, for that couple. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so it could be, you know, 30 or 40 people yeah. um, all working towards the same goal. Um, and we're just kind of working in unison. So, yeah. So, but ultimately it, from my team directly, it's just myself and my assistant. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. That's so, yeah. <laughs> cause considering like there'll be, you know, there could be, especially if it's a big installation, there might be four or five stop, like, you know, florists there. There's, yes. if it's a big video team, a big pho like photography team, exactly. Um, just staying on top of everyone. <laughs> yes. Yes. I mean, again, if it's a larger wedding, um, like Chul's and Cam's wedding that we had, yes. you know, there was there was five of us. Yeah. So, because there was different things going on on that day that we had to manage. And so we had separate teams doing all different things. Yep. Yeah. So it just depends on the wedding. Um, but traditionally, uh, again, I don't like to make it even more expensive for the couples. <laughs> so, yes, if, it, uh, if it's all um, kind of streamlined that day and – Multiple people don't have to be in multiple places. Yeah, yeah. just myself and my assistant. Because I imagine most of your clients would be pretty busy in the first place. Like that's why yes. they're, you know, they're, they're, you know, professionals doing whatever they're doing. Yes. Um. So that they like those fifteen calls. I feel like are they utilizing those fifteen calls? Like because I'm assuming by the time they book you, they're they're trusting you. Like yes. they've they've seen your work. They know what you do, and they're like, cool. Like we trust your decisions as well. Yes. Um. So yeah, like they. How involved does a couple, I know every couple is different, but like how involved do they actually get it once depends, you take over planning? As you say, it depends yeah. on the couple um, and it also depends on if you've got both of them, mm -hmm. just the yes. bride or just the groom or yep. both of them together. Yep. So, yeah, so so those 15 meetings can go very quickly, hun. Okay. Uh, particularly if they need uh, us, let's say uh, the the bride wants us to go gown shopping with her. Yeah. So if we go to five gown stores, that's five meetings already done. Five so, photographer meetings. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why with the styling package, I like to kind of be a little bit more strategic in what we use those for. Yes. Um, and again, they can always add on because we never quite know where people are at in their planning. They could be right at the beginning. They could be right at the end. Um, but ultimately, yes. Um, so I like to be quite strategic with the styling meetings yeah you know if i feel like i'm not adding value to that meeting maybe i shouldn't be going mm. um but with the full planning clients you know there is no limit we are at a, every meeting that you go to because we want to be across everything that people say um so that on the wedding day you know we can be like actually at that meeting that we did on the 10th of december this is what we agreed to so this is why that's we I need to organize that so <laughs> i yeah. didn't even think about like 
dress shopping, gown shopping. Like, gown shopping. Like honey. far out. That's Oh, yeah. Like, uh, you know, some people want to do it with their bridesmaids. So they like, Fee, it's cool. I've yeah. got this. Yeah. And some people are like, look, Fee, all my bridesmaids are overseas. Yeah. My parents live overseas. You know, I really need some help. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, you know, I just need to have, you know, a, a little cheerleader in the corner. So, How yeah. good. Yeah. And actually gown shopping is one of my favorite things too. That's so. a, I never like, never thought about that. That's, yes. that's really not cool. Everybody does it. Yeah. Um, not all planners do gown shopping and things like that. Yep. Uh, you know, a lot of um, planners are very focused on the styling side of things, but I ultimately want to be with that client uh, as much as they want me to be there. So, yeah, so it's good fun. All right. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, <laughs> Across exactly. all the facets of everything. I know, I know. It's <laughs> going to be, you know, uh, next week we're going to a, a beautiful boutique. Uh, this particular client that we're working with, uh, we've been to six gown stores. Uh, we've been back multiple times to the store to make sure it is the one. Yep. And, yeah, so she's locking it in next week. So it's very exciting. So, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I'll get on to um, another question. Um, cool. We're unsure about if we need a full wedding planning service Ooh. or if we just need an on-day coordinator. Mm. Um, we'll be traveling for our wedding but feel like we will be okay booking all of our own venues. Mm -hmm. Could you please give us a little advice? Yes. I mean, for those people, um, I think it's ultimately always make sure if you're going to plan your own wedding and potentially need somebody on, you know, for wedding day coordination, yeah. uh, I would make sure that you always, if you're going to have like a chat with a, with a vendor, always follow it up with an email of what was discussed. Okay. Yep. Um, just so that there's no tricky, <laughs> tricky things that happen later. Um, I think also uh, with a couple like that, I would also suggest Always read your contracts. Yes. Uh, they're they're very, uh, getting even more complex now and I think it's so important to understand what you're signing, particularly mm -hmm. when it comes to ven venues Yeah. because people are locking themselves into these kind of unachievable numbers sometimes and they're not realising that they're doing that. Mm -hmm. And then it comes round to the wedding day and we're into final numbers and things like that and they're not actually hitting the final numbers and so we're, they're losing out a huge amount of money okay. because they haven't – Re, you know, negotiated it or realize what they had got themselves into. So, so is that in? They haven't. They don't have enough guests there. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Cool. So yep. they've agreed to. You know, the minimum of guests is maybe 180. Yeah. Um, and they've only got 158. Let's say. Mm -hmm. So they're actually leaving money on the table because a lot of venues will uh, just convert that to venue hire. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, what I like to do at the beginning of a planning process is to make sure that that's not dead money. Uh, so that if there is a discrepancy, that can be used towards something else like canapes, uh, extra canapes, cocktails on arrival, mm -hmm. um, antipasto station, um, you know, just to make sure it's used. Yeah. That is just, yeah, dead money is the worst. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So I think those are kind of really key things that couples who want to plan their own weddings but do want wedding day coordinators to come on board. Yeah. Um, that's something to definitely think about at the beginning of, of their planning process and then bring us on and then we'll make it very streamlined <laughs> for you. So uh, Yeah, I've even seen that with um, venues. You don't realise like, oh, we can't have, um, you know, candles. Like we can't actually have proper candles in there. It has to be the battery yes. operated ones. Yes. And then they go to a stylist and they love all these photos and we love all of this and it's got candles everywhere. Yes. Um, and then the stylist might not even realise they haven't worked at that venue before. Yes. And so then they come and they're like, oh, no, you can't have candles here. Exactly. Um, or say they like bands. Like, yeah, we want this, you know, five-piece band. And they're yes. like, yeah, you can, but definitely levels are here so <laughs> exactly exactly i mean you know by working at these amazing venues for example key doesn't allow um drum sets okay um and uh both key and belong do not allow as you say open flame yeah so by only either knowing it in the contract or you've worked there before mm -hmm. um it's it, it can be a bit of a surprise. <laughs> but again, this is why I like to do a very comprehensive timeline, hun, which I send to the venue yep. and it, uh, you know, says exactly what we're bringing in, yep. you know, every single item. Mm -hmm. So that if there is any issues, then it also falls on them to tell us, actually, we read through your timeline and yep. we see that you're bringing real candles. Yeah. We actually don't allow real candles and you're kind of mitigating that issue on the butt. But yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Like, but again, yeah. I've ran out in the middle of a wedding or, you know, 
the hubby's going to <laughs> to the two dollar store to get the little LED. Yeah. You know? So it's all a matter of just finding a solution to those issues. Yeah. Yep. And looking calm while you do it. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> broken leg or no broken leg. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so would you see any like different kind of um trends or anything coming through your weddings like yes. it kind of seems to work that you know the higher end weddings will see things and then maybe mm-hmm. a year later it'll kind of trickle down to the rest of the market exactly are you seeing things coming through at the moment with your weddings yes yes i think uh content creators mm-hmm. yeah i've taken the world by storm hun. but again we used to do this already so we used to always hire a separate photographer to shoot our On, you know yeah our backstage uh, to to do the room shots because obviously the main photographer was already with our couples. We've just really now named it. Yes. Um, so that's been really exciting. Um, oh, I think uh, there's a huge trend on like Basque waist uh, gowns that we are seeing, hun. those really like super, super tall candles and like that very floaty kind of ceiling draping. And then there's like a huge thing on like satin entrance ways um yeah so it's really exciting to see it's coming through but again not everybody's into that yeah so so but it's nice to kind of know what those are and introduce them to couples mm-hmm. and see if it's their vibe and if it's not then we find out what their vibe is so yeah yeah satin's making its way back it's like yes. all full circle <laughs> exactly exactly uh, who would have thought satin's <laughs> returned <laughs> yeah perfect all right and we had, what else do we have for the listeners here? Um, oh, okay, they were asking about maps actually. Oh, so right. we saw okay. you worked with Jules and Cam. So was that actually on maps or was that their? No, so okay. I did their love wedding hunt. Okay, So cool. um, the producers at maps create the actual Married at First Sight weddings okay. for the show. Yep. And then obviously Jules and Cam got engaged on the show and so we did their real wedding a year later or the love wedding, which is what I call it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, okay. so with the actual family and friends and and Jules and Cam got to you know plan every single element of that wedding. Oh, so, amazing. Yeah, with me and we did it in 3 months. So it was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was an extraordinary wedding. Really really fun. Um uh we did uh we did it at um Beta Bar in the city. Mm-hmm. Um and that's a really cool venue. We actually created a ceremony upstairs and then have them come down to the restaurant oh, and have um uh, dinner there and while they were at dinner we were converting the ceremony space into the after party space so we had wow. all these things hidden behind a curtain that none of the venue we had an entire um you know uh, led dance floor behind a curtain in the ceremony space and none of the guests realized that there was all these road cases <laughs> <laughs> behind the scene and we just kind of um as, as they went downstairs, we had a very intense two hours to <laughs> convert it into an after party space with like balloons and a band, and it was uh, it was so much fun. Yeah, yeah. That's so a full surprise, like at the end of, at surprise. the end of reception. Nobody would have. I don't think any of the guests were prepared for that. They just thought, "Oh, we're going back to the ceremony space." Yeah, and then they walked in. And it was like you know this huge LED dance floor. <laughs> And um, a balloon installation and, you know, it was really fun. It was really, really fun. Amazing. Yeah. With, with the, um, I want to touch on, you got named Wedding Planner of the Year with the ABIA. Yeah. Yes. I um, don't really have any experience with them. Yes. Do you want to talk about like what that experience is and how kind of building credibility, I guess, within your brand. Yes. How that all kind of ties in with each other. Yes. So I actually joined ABIA uh, back in 2010, hun, yep. when I first started. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, at the time I was new to the game. So I thought, let me get part of this community yep. um, and, you know, have these, uh, this guidance and this group of amazing people. And so, yeah, so I've been with them now for 15 years. Um, and then I won my first um, uh, like state award in, back in 2011, which was oh, crazy, wow. especially for me. I mean, like I haven't in. even, I know, oh, yeah. and I hadn't even like won a meat raffle in my life. <laughs> so to win, you know, wedding planner of the year for New South Wales, I was like, wow, okay, this is amazing. I'm doing something right. Yeah. So, and then we just, um, then we won the national award. Mm -hmm. So we went up against all the planners from all the other States and I did that two years in a row and it was, yeah, it was just so, so much fun and great to be part of that incredible community. Um, you know, before Instagram. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, so yeah, I, I'm a huge fan of the ABIA. We just did their, um, 
we just did the warts two weeks ago, which which was at the Crown in the city, and it was just a lovely night. Uh, Natasha um, has taken over from her dad now, yeah, okay. and runs ABIA, and she is she's a woman, and yeah. and she's just had a baby, so she is amazing, <laughs> a powerhouse, powerhouse, <laughs> yeah. It's so good, and like it is so nice to be able to hang out with other vendors, you know. Yes. Out, like you work at work, and everyone's just kind of crazy doing their thing. Yeah. It's actually about to sit down and like actually converse and talk about you know what exactly. you're doing. Um, cause like, it feels like so many people are going through the same thing and, you yes. know, and be either you're learning from other people or you're teaching other people. It's mm. so nice in both aspects. Yes, I agree. I agree. So yeah. So pre, pre Instagram, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, ABIA was, you know, where, where I kind of like, Oh my goodness, what do I do here? So yeah, they've been really wonderful. If there was someone starting out today and they want to get into wedding planning, mm. what would your advice be to them? Really good question, hun. Again, I get a lot of resumes, yeah. um, probably as much as I get supplier <laughs> requests. <laughs> I think definitely, um, you know, maybe go work at a venue, maybe go work at a furniture hire company, you know, where, where they need a lot of bodies and mm-hmm. kind of really start to understand bump ins, bump outs, um, how things work timing wise. Um, and I think that's a really good way to come in. Because a lot of the wedding planners, particularly in Sydney, you know, they're all uh, family based. They're yep. all quite small. So sometimes it's not uh, feasible to be kind of a thousand interns, you know. Yeah. yeah. So I think I think that's a good way to start and get the, you know, get the experience. And, and then you can kind of go into it once once you know a little bit more about how it works. So, yeah. Do you or does anyone offer like education for wedding planners? Like I'm sure there's courses. Yes, there is. Uh, not so much specific ones at the moment, hun, yep. uh, unless you're going to kind of the bigger universities. Yep. I know um, at the time when I went to the Blue Mountains International Hotel mm-hmm. Management School, they they didn't have an event zone yet. They were just focusing on hotels, yep. but now they have an actual event course, which you can do, okay. which is so cool. You yeah. know, they've realized that this is what people are after. Um, and I actually went back 20 years later <laughs> and, and, you know, spoke with, with the events, uh, students, which is so amazing to me. Like I was in your position 20 years ago <laughs> and here I am now. Um, you know, so it was really cool to kind of return to you, to your university and kind of speak, uh, to all these amazing people who want to get into the event zone. So, yeah, yeah. so it was kind of a little, little 360, a little 180. <laughs> it's fun. So. I feel like it would be like that. There'd be so many people you probably don't even realise like looking up to, you know, yeah. you're always looking up to where I want to be. And there'd be so many people looking to you like that's the pinnacle. That's, you know, I want these high-end weddings. How do I get there? Yes. So, um, yeah, just to have, have reached there. Yeah. Yeah, it must be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. And again, I'm very small. There's massive um, planning companies in Sydney, you know, and but I like that I'm small. Yeah. I think uh, I think it's just kind of that, uh, as I said before, that relationship with those with those couples. Yeah. No? We should take you back to like couples and giving mm. them a bit of advice. Yes, <laughs> let's do that. Um, so, yeah, like. A typical from say booking venue through to wedding date mm. would would that be kind of a year timeline or yes. yeah I, w- I would say a nice year is a, a good amount of time it, the couple won't feel rushed uh, they can do a little a little bit of planning every month yep. you know we can tick a few things off and then they don't feel super pressured so. yeah okay and then down the timeline like say you know I'm sure like photographers video for you is pretty close to kind of venue yes they're um, normally straight after yeah okay and I've actually started to do makeup artists and hairdressers also around that zone I mm-hmm. used to do it a little bit later yeah but now because of the popularity of Instagram you know there's some very well known um, makeup and hair people particularly in Sydney yeah and and you need to get on them very mm. quickly you need to yeah, you need to book them in yeah. rather fast. Yeah. Um, and so, yes, those are kind of things that I'm coordinating once we've got a venue, photographer, videographer, hair and makeup, and yeah. then we go into you know, flowers and yeah. cakes and all that fun stuff. I feel the same thing because when we book a client, we'll kind of give them recommendations of who we like working with as well. Yes. And like, yeah, a lot of the times the brides will get back to us and they're like, oh, those three makeups were already booked. Yes. And you're like, it's a year out. Like I know. That was never, that wasn't the case. No. No, um, exactly. And and there's normally only one of them, you yeah. know, sometimes they have teams, mm. 
but normally the bride wants that person. Yes. So, yeah, it's tricky. Yeah. yeah. Far out. All yeah. Right. <laughs> In popular time. That's it. How how do you think it's looking for 2025 and 2026 at the moment? Um, there's a lot of people. Um, mm. You might be in a different market anyway, but I feel, sure. you know, like a lot of people are a bit scared, or definitely about 2024, but 2025 people are feeling a bit iffy about at the moment. I think uh, as this year has been a little bit interesting, mm-hmm. <laughs> a little dip, Yeah, I feel like it's going to go back up again. Yeah. Uh, or I, I definitely have seen the majority of my weddings are in 2025 and 2026. Yeah. So it's definitely been a lot quieter this year. So I don't think we have anything to worry about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they're, they're always going to get married. Oh, <laughs> we oh. did COVID, we did GFC, like we, we'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. I was speaking to someone earlier and they were saying same thing. It's like they see, you know, they work with a lot of venues and they can mm. kind of see like the venues are booking. Yes. So it's like, but maybe they're just not booking the florist yet or the photographer yet. Maybe. They're kind of booking, you know, a year and a half out for a venue, but yes. then those bookings for everything else will start coming down the line a bit as well. Yes. I um, think people are uh, wanting to save more money over a longer period of time mm-hmm. at the moment. And so sometimes they don't want to lock in vendors just yet, but they want yep. to do the research and then they'll do the deposits a little later, which is dangerous but you know um but yeah i think i think it's it's slightly changed since post covid mm-hmm. mm. would your couples still be coming from instagram or is it a lot of word of mouth or instagram's been huge for us um you know i love gone are the days where you used to post one photo <laughs> back in 2015 and you get like a thousand followers overnight <laughs> uh, you know once they monetize that uh, then, yep. then it changed but yeah it's been huge and or at least if they found you through google they're definitely looking at your instagram most likely even before they look at your website mm-hmm. um you know so yeah so i think that's a huge a huge area that people need to look at we should probably be doing a little bit more tiktok but yeah, hey, we'll, we'll work on that. <laughs> so it's everyone's story at the yeah, moment. Like exactly. We know we should be doing it, but we're not. <laughs> yeah. no, 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 I just, uh, you know, I really love Instagram. I like, I know how to work it. Yeah. It's exactly, I have no idea. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, but this is what I'm being on a mission because it has been a little quieter this year. I yeah. have been, um, I've just in, in the middle of a rebrand. Yeah. So um, I've had the same logo for the last 15 years. I think it's time. Yeah, it's yeah. Time for a new one. Um, so I've just refreshed the website and now I'm looking for the perfect website designer to, you know, create that whole new experience. Um, we just did a brand shoot a few weeks ago. Oh, beautiful. Um, so I think it's it's the time to kind of, you know, it's the new era. Yeah. So, yeah, it's okay, exciting. It, it's a time to invest in the business yeah. is now, like exactly. especially while you got the time. And yes. we've talked about it before, there are so many – This maybe not so much anymore, but like there was this influx maybe a year or two ago of like new wedding vendors coming in Huge. there. Yeah. And it feels like it's maybe that's going to almost kind of a lot of people are going to leave the industry soon. It's kind of getting to that peak. Yes. But it's definitely the time like you need to be investing now um, to kind of stay relevant for the next 10 exactly. years, five, 10 years as well. Exactly. I'm also looking for a social media manager as well, interviewing different people. So yeah. because as much as I love it, I think, you know, these lovely 22 year olds are much better at it than yeah. I am. So yeah. yeah, so I think it'll be really nice to have that given to somebody else. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I was chatting to Sophie from Engage Creative before and yes, she was saying the she same thing. Cool. <laughs> she was like, it's the same thing. You know, she's like, I love these 20 something year old girls because yeah. they're essentially their own market. You know, like they're yeah. they're doing their TikToks for who they are. Yeah. Um and you just if we try and do it, it's it's not authentic. It you know it's it's, like it's not going to work. I, I don't think I'm that person. <laughs> <laughs> and so. it, it's a battle of um, constantly evolving to um, service a younger compared to you yes. clientele yes. and trying to stay relevant with them. And it, it is actually yes. without sounding old, it, it's hard to kind of keep relevant. Yes, and I think also I got into this game to be in the background. Mm-hmm. Yep. And now branding is all about being the forward face it is. you know yeah and so i can't be in the background anymore yeah which is a little terrifying so but it's something i really enjoy i hope people can see my yeah. personality come through yeah um but yeah it's definitely been a little bit of a daunting thing to do but but i'm getting there <laughs> yeah it is as personal branding seems to be everything at the moment Huge. like you have to i was um recording my um i've got a social media uh, like agency that looks mm. after my ads yes. and they're like we need videos of you and then I'm like talking to a camera like, hello, I am. <laughs> like, 
It's so hard. I know. I literally, <laughs> I did this, uh, you know, uh, the day that we did the ABIA's um, awards. I was like, okay, I'm in full hair and makeup. Yep. Let's go. Mm-hmm. So I created this terrible setup <laughs> in, my, in my office and I, and I talked to camera and I did all these different videos of, what I want to discuss over the next few weeks and yep. yeah, but yeah, it's, it's definitely not very natural. It's hard. I had to have um, a uh, teleprompter and yes. I, I literally had to have I it. I literally had my computer like on the high chair yeah. in the background <laughs> so that it would give me a little bit of information. Just those little points that I can Just kind of refer little, to. Yeah. yeah. But it was great. It was great. It went very well. Yeah. It's like you're a wedding planner, but you also have to be a personality and you've I got know. to be have the best website ever and the best social media ever. It's, exactly. Um, so there's a, there's a lot more pressure than, mm-hmm. you know, back in the day I just started my website. Yeah. Now it would have been a completely different experience. We would have had to have a launch party yeah. um, and an Instagram, you know, countdown and all these <laughs> sort of things. So in a way it was kind of nice to start back in 2009 yeah. so there wasn't so much pressure to come in mm-hmm. um but but yeah again this is what it's all about yeah exactly yeah. yep and it's like yeah it's either it'd be very hard to come in now but then it's it's almost like for the last you know 12 years i've had 35 weddings every single year and like yes. didn't really advertise or when you could first advertise maybe with facebook you put like a tiny bit of money and like all these leads came in you know? yeah exactly <laughs> it's like exactly but like what worked for those first 10 years no yeah. longer do and you got I mean, it, the directories f- used to be huge back in the day exactly and now now it has to be a combination of directory with a blog for the Google yeah. with the Instagram social posts. So it's a, yeah, it's a whole different ball game now. Yeah. You have to be a full marketing team yeah. as well as do what you actually do. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> so good. But yes, I love the content creators, especially when they can come and manage our social accounts for us on the day. Yes. Cause there's a, again, a lot of pressure to uh, show the wedding as mm-hmm. it's happening mm-hmm. now, yeah. which again, you know, back in the day, Maybe we'd post it like six weeks after, you know. Yeah. Um, but but again, it's wonderful to kind of have that. So yeah. Do you actively like search for PR and like, you know, trying to get your work published? Is that like a a big part of the business? Yes. I think contacting like Vogue and all those amazing places, Wedded Wonderland, yep. um, the Wed, Hello May. You yep. know, it's again it's a it's a whole <laughs> it's a whole job on its own. So yeah, so it's really kind of nice to connect with those people mm-hmm. and have those relationships with them and you can just be like here's an amazing wedding I did what do you yeah. think <laughs> so yeah. yeah do you see do you if you get featured in Vogue do you <laughs> see that has a payoff effect that you can yes. kind of see? yeah it does absolutely yeah. particularly Vogue yeah, yeah. okay yeah Especially I think the- it's just got that that name behind it, you mm-hmm. know. Definitely. You see the photographers with like the Vogue logo and you're like, tick. Yeah, it's, like a, it. it's like exactly. a meta verified. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, in the old days, you would put all your media on a media page. Yeah. Now it all has to be on the homepage. Mm-hmm. You know, that client is looking at 15 different wedding planners. They need to immediately see that you've worked with all these amazing people. So, yeah. yeah. And you, that t- like does make a big thing. Do you think if someone sees that you have, you know, you've, everywhere you've been featured, I looked at your webpage, I was like, oh, Oh, okay. <laughs> like, cool. You've, you've, you've been featured everywhere. Poor guy. I'm like, here's another one. Yeah. And, and do you mind if we just make it a little straighter? Uh, can we move the channel seven and the channel nine around? Yeah. yeah. yeah he was, he was done. Yeah. But your clients, that, that is a big deal to them. Like they want to see. It seems to have again, become much more, um, a thing that they're after, mm-hmm. you know? So, and, and, you know, it's only once you start putting down all the logos, you realize, oh, wow, I started to work with all these fab, fantastic people being featured in all these wonderful places. Um, and you're like, ah, oh, that's so good. I love it. I go all right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's really cool. I like it. Any Anything exciting news that we should know for the business moving forward? Like- really? Hadn't, I think, you know. Keep your eyes peeled. We are creating the new website. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about the new little mini consult um, that I've just created. I think that's been really fun for couples. Yeah. Um, it seems to uh, be really taking off. It just gives them that kind of lovely foundation for them to plan their own weddings. And I think, you know, it's always just nice to have a little chat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, see what they're, see what they're after and, and kind of. Uh, and then you get, you know, six months later, you get the little email saying, Fee, we got married, here's the photos, yeah. you know. So it's really kind of nice that you maybe that's one of the venues that you suggested to them and they've mm-hmm. gone through that whole process and, 
Yeah. yeah. Well, that's why I got into it. So yeah. yeah. Or it's or it's a month later and they're like, Fee, we need your help. <laughs> <laughs> that has also happened. So it's nice. It's really nice to connect with them, you know, and re- they can realize that I know what I'm talking about and, and I'm there to make it better for them and easier for them. So yeah. yeah. Well, do you have any other parting words before we sign off here? I don't know. Um, I think, you know, just have fun planning a wedding, you know. Uh, I know a lot of couples get very kind of bombarded by all the things that are coming at them. Um, but, yeah, just really enjoy it. Um, take every second, particularly on your wedding day. I know everybody tells you it goes really fast. It really goes fast. <laughs> so, yeah, just enjoy. Just love love the experience. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Thank you. And where can people find you when they're looking for you? So uh, you can find me on my Instagram yeah. <laughs> at Couture Wedding Planning or my website, coutureweddingplanning.com.au um, and and also TikTok if you want. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so that's that's the best way to find me. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking thank the time. You. Like I really appreciate coming really? down. Thank and just you. to get a different perspective, like I said, what you do is kind of completely out of the realm of what I do up in Byron. It's, sure. a, it's a completely different market. So it is, that. it is really nice to hear from you and Thanks. yeah, just these really high end weddings. Um, you could kind of have this stigma of the event planner that you would think would deal with a really high end client, if you understand what yeah. I mean. And you're definitely not the super yeah. relatable, super personable. Like it's really nice. Yeah. Well, I think, I think you have to be, hun. I, I, I don't like snobs yeah. personally. <laughs> So I think, you know, and you have to get on really well with a whole bunch of different people. So I think you just got to be like a bit of a cheerleader, bit of a ringleader, <laughs> um, you know, um, and I think, I think that's so important um, to make it fun, to make it enjoyable because why are we here? You know, we're here to make it fun. So that's what I'm here to do. Beautiful. Thank yeah. you so much for coming Thank on. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for tuning in to the Wedco podcast. We're dropping a fresh episode every week featuring industry professionals dishing out the wedding wisdom you need to turn those dreams into reality. Make sure you are following us on social media, you have those notifications turned on so we can help plan your wedding day. Your dream wedding day just got a whole lot easier. Thanks for listening.